can't buy It resides between my eyes Walk through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a peach If you find the same And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. Um, you know, some you've never heard of and some you've heard of. You know, Juan, I love telling the, the journey and the stories. It's not always rosy along the way and some of those bumps and challenges in the road. And you should check out, I tell people, check out past episodes. You know, there's one with Pipe Drive co-founder Ermas. He talks about having brain surgery, getting married, and moving from Estonia to the U.S. all in the same year. At the time, they had about 10,000 paying customers um, when I interviewed him. Now they have over 100,000 customers. So they've grown tremendously. Um, there's also an interview with Chris Ategeka, and he moved. It's an amazing story. I mean, one of the most amazing stories I've heard. Uh, he grew up in Uganda, and his parents died of AIDS when he was young. When he was seven, he had to take care of the whole household. Um, it's just it's an amazing journey. And he speaks nine languages. He ended up coming to the U.S. Wow. for college. Um, and just what he did, he formed nonprofits and for-profit companies. And, and we're going to dig in with Juan's story in a, in a second. Um, and in it, kind of that theme, Juan, of it fascinates me when someone has to pick up, they live in a different country and they pick up, have to move to another country because we t- sometimes take those things for granted. You know what I mean? And you show up in another country and just things are different. So we're going to talk about Juan's story and, and and what happened with him. But um, before I introduce you, today's episode is brought to you by Rise25. At Rise25, you know, I co-founded my business partner, John Corcoran, and we help businesses launch and run their podcast. Um, what I see, Juan, in my life, and I know you're, you're very similar, is the number one thing in my life is relationships. And I always look of how do I give to my best relationships. And the podcast is a way that I can profile others thought leadership and their companies to give to them. And so if you're a company and you're thinking about starting a podcast, you can call us. We've been doing it for, for over 10 years, um, rise 25.com. Um, and check it out. Now today's guest, I'm super excited and a big thank you to Dean Dutro and Ryan O'Connor at worth e-commerce. They help e-commerce stores increase sales by 20% or more through email and they have the Relationship Commerce Podcast where they have top leaders in e-commerce. And that's how I met Juan because Dean was like, you need to have Juan on. He's amazing. I'm like, I trust you, Dean. Let's do it. And uh, Juan Chavez is a serial entrepreneur. He runs an e-commerce business called JMC Automotive Equipment. It's been in the Inc. 5000. He also runs a VIP concierge entertainment company and a call center in Colombia. Now, call center is not really proper. It's really what's the solution does it provide, right? So if you have sales, customer service, or marketing needs, they have nothing but English speaking agents that handle other company services. So check it out. Email one. You can go to jmcautomotiveequipment.com to check out what they're doing there. They've been in the industry for the past 20 years and have extensive knowledge in everything automotive repair uh, related. So Juan, thanks for joining me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jeremy. I want to start the journey, you know, um, when you moved to the U.S. So talk about life in Peru and then transitioning, actually just moving to a different country in general, right? So, um, yeah. So like you said, I was born in Peru, right? My family uh, moved to New York when I was 11. So that was back in 93, right? In Peru at that point. Uh, there was a lot of terrorism going on. Really? So uh, wow. yeah, a lot of terrorism, uh, a lot of inflation, you know, the current president wasn't doing a good job. You know, he actually became a dictator for quite a while. Uh, so that's when we actually basically had to flee the country, you know, because there wasn't that much, uh, we didn't have that much money and obviously there wasn't that, mu- that much opportunity. Right. So, uh, luckily my grandmother lived in New York at the time. She had moved to New York, I think in the early, in the seventies. So, of course, my father went to New York uh, to basically find a new opportunity for us. And that's when, uh, little by little, like, he, uh, well, when, when he first moved over there, right, as anybody, as any immigrant moving to the United States would do, like, a lot of people say, hey, you know, go get a job as a cook, go get a job as a dishwasher. You know, my father actually did not want to do that because he was obviously a college graduate, um, was in the military in Peru and an English-speaking person. 
So he actually decided to to become a salesperson in the automotive world. Mm. You know, uh, yeah. So like actually, basically, what he started doing in '93 when he moved to New York was what I'm doing right now, uh, selling equipment to auto repair shops and auto body shops. Right. So um, literally within the first three months, he became top salesperson in his company because his only motivation was to bring us from peru to new york did he of come course, by himself then at the time he, he came by himself oh that's a tough choice yeah well i mean he had to because he didn't have any we didn't have any money for an extra right. ticket. so at first he actually moved to mexico because my uh, my uncle lived there so he tried to look for an opportunity in mexico within like a month he saw that he couldn't find anything so he decided to go to new york hmm. uh so in the, he arrived to new york in 93 or 92 excuse me and within three months, he finally was able to bring my mother, um, then my sister, and then me in September of 93 to New York. And of course, I was 11, so I wasn't really aware of, what's going, of what was going on too much. Uh, I was to a certain extent. What, what, did, the, what, was, what were you thinking at the time? What was going through your head? At first, I was like, awesome, we're going to New York, <laughs> we're going to live in the United States. Uh, of course, once we were moving, I was like, I was very sad because my family lived in Peru. My, 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 my friends to, the, the, to this day I speak to lived in Peru. So, you know, I was sad. But I was also excited that I was going to see my father and uh, my whole family. Because like I said, the only people that were, well, the only members of my immediate family that were in Peru at the time were, was me and my little sister. So my mom, my, my other sister and my father were in New York already. So I was excited to see them, but I was also sad that... that uh, that I was so they sequentially Peru. kind of went over. You were the last person to go I was over. The last person, yep. Because uh, my 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 sister, my younger sister, uh, couldn't live without my father. So my father did anything. You know, he bought the ticket for her and and uh, mm-hmm. brought her to New York right away. Then, of course, it was my mother. You know, my mother was able to. Oh, my father was able to buy my mother the ticket, so my mom can travel to New York. And then, of course, it was me and my my youngest sister. That's amazing. Juan well, really is like, you better, you have to be good at that time. If you're bad to your parents, we're like, all right, Juan, you better be good or we're not, you know, <laughs> we're leaving you there. <laughs> you no, know? I, don't, I don't think they wanted it. I mean, I was, I was a good kid, any, no. you know, but regardless if I was a bad kid, I'm pretty sure my father was. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but what was it like? What was the transition like once you got there? Was it easy? Was it hard? It was hard because of the English the, you know, I didn't, I didn't know how to speak English at the time. So it took, well, being that I was 11 and that I went to a school, you know, that basically everybody spoke English, I learned pretty much uh, in six months how to speak English. So that's amazing. Um, and then, wow. Yeah. And then afterwards, basically, you know, I was able to communicate, but it was th- those first six months were pretty hard. You know, like I couldn't, uh, couldn't speak to anybody, you know, I didn't, there wasn't any, any uh, Latinos in my school at the time. Really? So, None? You know, yeah, in that particular wow. school, there weren't. Yeah, I think hmm. there was one, but I didn't really get along with them. So, <laughs> so I kind of was forced to hang out with the with the with the English speaking kids, which was good for me, you know. So, well, so. that talk about a driving force, Juan. Like your dad comes, he's like, "I gotta make sales because I need to bring my family over here." Yep. You yeah. know. So, so that was a pretty cool story. When like he didn't tell, I didn't know this back then, you know, but he told me this when I was when I was a little older that everybody, when he first got there, they were like, oh, I'm gonna hook you up with a job as a dishwasher. I'm, um, you know, I'm gonna get you a, a job as a cook in a restaurant. He was like, no, 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 that's not gonna make me any money. Like, you know, I, I, he knew, basically he knew his self-worth. You know, he, like I said, he was a, he had graduated college, um, English speaking person, very disciplined and hardworking. So he knew what he can accomplish. So he, he went yeah. to, to a job where they didn't pay him any salary, but he, he was able to get, you know, uh, earn, high commissions so so what like, brought you talk, tell me about how you got started in the automotive world um so at, at first once i graduated college uh he actually got me a job uh in his in the company that he was working with doing sets you know but as a 21 year old kid you're visiting repair shops where there's nothing but 40 to 50 year old you're men. going door to door you're going shop to shop yeah i'm going to door to door i hated it i literally hated that job and within like i think I didn't make not one sale when I was 21, 22. And I actually left. I was like, you know, I told, uh, I told my father, that I was like, this is not for me. I'm sorry. Like, you know, and he's like, if you want to quit, go ahead, you know, do, do what you got to do. So after that, uh, did real estate for a couple of years. 
uh, in New York, in, in Wall Street, that I actually enjoyed. Uh, you know, and in 2008, when the whole, um, the whole recession hit, I was like, you know, I, the real estate market was going down. So I, I didn't, I couldn't continue doing that. So I was like, you know what, let me do, let me go into law school so I can at least go back to school and have a degree in law, you know, which is something that I, that I thought would be, would help me out in my, in my career. Um, so then what, as I was studying for the, for the LSATs, I met a lot of lawyers <laughs> and a lot of these lawyers told me that they were, they were, they weren't happy. They were sad. They were depressed. They were working 80 hours a week, never able to enjoy their life. So I was like, you know what? That's not the life for me either. You know, I was actually very good at the LSATs classes, but I would like, I, I, I didn't want to have that lifestyle. And right around that same time is, uh, the opportunity was presented to me to come to, to travel to Medellin to start a call center. This is in 2009. Right. So, uh, my business, my, my business partner at the time was able to find like, uh, yeah, well, he was able to find an investor so he, he can, they can bring us down here and they did. And the reason how Medellin comes into play is because I, I had a friend that was living in Medellin for, since 2006. He started a call center. So we we're like, Hey, we could do the same thing. Right. So we started the call center that lasted for a year. And, um, that basically after a year, it kind of just crashed completely. First business as a 26, 27 year old kid, they didn't know what, what I was doing. So, you know, it went down the drain right after that. What was uh, it about it? It was, a, it was a call center is selling, uh, selling a service in the financial industry. Hmm. So we were doing good at first. We we're doing good. We were selling, you know, but of course, you know, when you come to a different country, especially something like Medellin, where is, you know, it's, it's a very fun place to say the least, you know, you get distracted and it didn't, it didn't work out for us. Uh, about a year and a half later, I started talking to my father about his business, right? And he was, he still kept on doing, uh, selling automotive equipment. Now, now by this point, he's very well known in the New York city area as the go-to guy when it comes to automotive equipment for any auto repair shops. Right. So I told him like just having a, a conversation with him, he tells me that he's only able to, to visit maybe five, six, maybe 10 people a day, you know, uh, but still he's doing well. Right. So obviously an idea starts, um, come, I'm, I start coming up with an idea of to create a website where people can just come to our site, like an e-commerce site where people can come and, um, and see, and see the products and buy, not just in New York, but across the country. Right. So my father calls, uh, a digital marketing company at the time. And they, they tell him that it's going to cost $10,000 to create a website. I was like, listen, I can literally do it for like $30. All I need is the domain <laughs> and the hosting and I'll figure out what to do. So I put up a website. This you know, is pre um, Shopify or was Shopify around pre, at the time? Pre Shopify. I think. Yeah. Yep. So like I put up a website, I forgot what, what the name of the company that I put the website with was called. Uh, and I put up some products that my father had, right? Like a, one, a couple of brands. And like I said, I didn't, and they didn't know anything about digital marketing. I didn't know anything about e-commerce. I kind of just started doing my research as I went along. And in the third month of having the website, I, we had our first sale a four, it was, uh, I remember I, to this day, I remember what the sale was. It was a four post lift that was around 4,000, $5,000. Wow. So I got really That's excited. a big for a like, sale. Yeah, that is a big for a sale. <laughs> So got really excited. I was like, this is working. This is amazing. And of course I stopped doing the running the call center. Cause at the time we still, we, we kept the call center, but we were looking at different campaigns, uh, you know, that, that would pay us. And of course none of them worked. And once I got that first sale, I was like, let me stop doing the call center. Let me focus my, my, my time in this. Cause not only is it working, but it's, it, it could be a, like a, it's my family's, my family's business. Right. So I started paying more and more attention to that. And that's how basically I came back to the automotive in mm. the industry from, you know, from, uh, from the beginning of time, like, you know, from basically when my father started this. That's so, your question. <laughs> so what was the next step in you growing JMC automotive equipment? So, you know, I could see, listen, dad, going to 10 shops a day, let's open up to the, you know, the U S mm. and you don't have to, go there or you have the relationships, just send them to the site. Um, what was the next step to grow GMC automotive? Um, 
Well, first I had to learn about e-commerce, learn about digital marketing, and learn about the equipment that I was selling, right? So obviously, like little by little, I started learning more and more, and just calling random, random companies in the automotive industry to so we can become distributors for them. And at first, of course, they were like, "No, we don't know who you are. You know, we don't. We're not going to give you a distribution." But uh, little by little, you know, after after our, our our name became well known, they started like giving us a distribution, and now people are just coming. Like we we get like a we get manufacturers coming up to us every month wanting to us to represent their products. But the next step basically was just learning, you know, learning about e-commerce, learning about digital marketing and learning how to get people into our, uh, into our website, which at the time we weren't doing any paid advertising, but we were doing a lot of SEO, you know, and uh, black hat SEO to say the least. So um, define, yo, tell me, what do you mean by black, black hat? Okay. So this, um, so I, I don't do SEO as much anymore, like me personally. I mean, I hire a company that does SEO. But at the time, there was two major types of SEO. You know, uh, for those that know, don't know what SEO is, it's search engine optimization. It's how you rank your website organically so, so people can, can find it in Google, yeah. right? So there's black Someone hat. searches best tires, you, exactly. you come up, and they buy tires from you, or whatever yeah. the case is. Exactly. So, um, so yeah, so it's black hat and white hat SEO. White hat is the, the, the good way to do SEO where you, know, you have a lasting impression. And obviously it takes a long time to, 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 to rank for certain keywords through, through white hat. And black hat is basically the, the shady way. <laughs> uh, some would say like, you know, the, the, the illegal way of ranking very, very fast. So we actually were able to rank for a lot of keywords doing black hat SEO. And then like our website started just getting traffic, started getting a lot of sales. And do those things still work today, but they're not, they're you're not supposed to do them at this point. But early on when people are doing SEO, I think it was just all gray, right? Like, you know, yeah. those, those things that are considered, you know, whatever black hat now back when people were doing them were just ways that you rank, you know what yeah. I mean? Exactly. So once Google started changing the way of their algorithm, that's when they started calling it black hat and white hat. And of course, the things that we were doing were illegal in Google's eyes. But at that time, it wasn't, it was just like you said, it was a free for all. Um, so of course, Google changes algorithm. They, they, they did, I forgot which one it was, I, f I forgot. But we, uh, all of the keywords that we were ranking on the first page got sent to, sent to the last page. So of course, that brought down our traffic completely. <laughs> Um, so we had to come up with different ways, but this whole journey is all about learning and basically and, and learning different ways to, to, to get people to our website, yeah. uh, whether it's SEO, social media, paid advertising or whatever it is, you know, and bringing new manufacturers to the website. Yeah. So SEO is one way and you still do, you know, kind of more proper SEO now. Yeah. Um, what are some other ways that you were able to get traffic to the site? Paid advertising, Google Shopping. So I have a uh, my my the, the person that actually handles my Google Shopping. He is uh, was my business partner when I when I opened up the call center, right? He so I I took the e-commerce direction and he took the paid like after we closed on the call center, he took the paid advertising, uh, digital marketing uh, direction. So he really focused on that and he became very very good at what he does. Um, and uh, actually he, he, he's, he still does that for me and he, I have great, great results for paid advertising with him. Um, apart from that, uh, a lot of blogging, a lot of blogging. So, uh, you know, I was, I was putting out articles for repair shop owners, you know, like I would call them basically like, you know, how to market your repair shop. So you get more, more, more people through the door. So of course, who's going to read that or repair shop owners. You know, and I, so I was giving a lot of value to these auto repair shop owners through websites like LinkedIn, Facebook, you know, on the Facebook groups and the LinkedIn groups. So we would get people t coming into our, into our website like that and getting to know us, you know, so not that they bought the first time, but they will look at the, at the, at the article, learn a little bit, and then remember our name when they had to buy something. So who are ideal customers for you? It sounds like it's not so much the end consumer, but a lot of repair shop owners are the best customers. Yep. So it's a lot of uh, auto repair shop owners, the, uh, the, 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 the decision makers 
of uh, of, of whoever buys uh, in the repair shop. You know, which is smart. Hour, yeah. yeah, because like you have me, I order one tire, but the repair shop owners probably ordered lots of tires every week because all the repairs are doing. Yeah. Well, we don't sell tires. We sell, for example, like uh, the bigger equipment, like car lifts, tire changes, wheel balancers. A regular consumer is not going to buy it unless mm. you're a, you're a you're a big car enthusiast. Like right. So like we we do we do get people buying a equipment. car. Yeah. Yeah. Like you know, like for example, we do sell to to the to consumers, but it, it'll be like a car lift, like a four post car lift, <laughs> right. like a parking lift type of thing. You know, but everything else is basically D to B. Got it. Yeah, I, I guess I was reading the tire changers because you have tire changers, car lifts, you know, auto body tools. So it's really for that someone who owns the auto body shop. Yep, yep, auto body and auto repair shops. Mm, that's really cool. So what's what's a popular product? The most the the most product uh, the most popular product that we have is a two post lift, right? Because every shop will need that. Mm. So it's basically. Do you know what a two post lift is? No. <laughs> I'm ignorant when it comes to car repairs. <laughs> gotcha. So, for, I mean, you've seen them every time you pass by a repair shop, they have yeah. it. It's basically uh, like a, it has two posts and these two posts, for example, the car will go in here and it will lift up the car up and down. Mm. That way the, re the mechanic doesn't have to get on the ground and fix the car, you know, from, from back the, back. the back. Yeah. Like th basically the car will lift up and then the mechanic will just fix, fix the car uh, underneath. So where does the one, where does the call center come into place? Because now you do have a call center. Right? Yeah. So now I have a call center, but basically this call center was developed through my own team of people um, that, that work for me. Right. Because I do have several businesses and I, I, I have created uh, or I have developed different leaders in my, in my, in my businesses so I can focus more on expansion of the business and opening up different types of business as well. Because I'm, I mean, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what it is about me, but I'm always, I'm always looking for more, <laughs> right? So, like, obviously, when I saw the opportunity to start a call center where I can help other businesses, yeah. um, you know, uh, maybe in the sales, customer service, or marketing, I, 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 I wanted to do that, right? Um, right now, it's just taking off. So, like, it's not like I'm really focusing on that because I still focus on the on the e-commerce side. But we do have a couple of potential clients that have digital marketing agencies, for example, and they use us to develop their websites, to come up with uh, some designs for them. You know, right now, like, like uh, one digital, uh, my friend's uh, agency is asking us about SEO packages for his clients. So it's basically white labeling stuff for yeah. him. You're doing you know? the same stuff that you do for your own business for Correct. other people. And at what point did you find a need for a call center for, JMC Automotive because were people then just wanting to call like they need help navigating the website or what what was the need there that you was like yeah we better get some people answering the phones well when I first started I was doing everything myself and I was yeah. answering the calls doing the accounting doing the marketing doing the customer service sending out the orders sending out the tracking information so little by little I started hiring people to help me out right so uh, first, I, I you know I I wanted to handle sales, so I hired a customer service rep that would help me fulfill the orders, send it out to the to the manufacturers, send the tracking to the clients, you know. And once more more and more calls started coming in, I started hiring sales guys, you know, so on and so on, you know. Like so now, for example, we have four salespeople, we have two customer service reps, uh, two marketing people, um, one bookkeeper that helps me with 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 my business, so. You know, uh, and obviously it's taken me a long time to develop them, to develop yeah. the team to the way, to the point it is. And like I said, to develop leaders, because I think that's the most important part, you know, not to just teach them the basics of, of the business, but also to, to develop them as leaders so they can come up with their own decisions. And even if they make mistakes, it's okay. Right. So it could, it could leave me, the owner of the company to, uh, to, to create or to help out with expansion or to expand the company a little bit more and to seek other opportunities in either the same industry or different industries. So what um, do you look for in a good salesperson? What are, what are the salespeople doing? Enthusiasm. Yeah. Positivity, right? Because if um, obviously like, you know, selling automotive equipment, 
you're not going to find a, a, like a, a random person that knows about automotive equipment, right? So obviously in order for you to be good at, at sales, I think you need to have enthusiasm, be positive, and a no quit attitude because you're going to hear a lot of no's, right? Luckily, everything in our e-commerce site is inbound, right? So I tell them, be enthusiastic, you know, ask, ask these people, how are you? What's going on? How, especially with everything going on right now, because right now we have, we, we can ask them, Hey, how you doing? How's your family doing? Is everybody healthy? You know, like, and reach out to them, go that extra mile. Because when I call my, the manufacturers that I work with, I mean, you know, they, the customer it's service business is, is as that, usual. Yeah. It's no, it's not, they're not that enthusiastic. Right. So they're like, Hey Juan, how you doing? You know, they're not like, hey, Juan, what's going on? How's the family? You know, like some of them do and some of them don't. So I learned, I like calling, for example, the manufacturers that ask, hey, how's your family? Hey, how are you doing? How are you, know, are you guys healthy? You know, how's business? Where the other manufacturers are like kind of customer service is just, yes, we have this in stock. <laughs> this is this much, you know, so it, you, so I kind of learn from that. And basically I'm kind of like teaching my, my guys, hey, be enthusiastic, be positive, be energetic, because that's what I like. That's what I like to hear when I call uh, all the all the places, and that's what a you know a regular person wants to hear as well. That comes through. It totally yeah. comes through. Exactly. What was the most important position that you were so excited to get off your plate? Definitely customer service, <laughs> because I uh, like sending out sending the, 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 the order to the manufacturer, you know, it kind of just, I, re, I wanted to focus on sales and marketing. So that kind of like, in my eyes, not a waste of time, obviously, but you know, definitely something that's extremely important, but I rather focus my strengths on sales and marketing. You know, so sending out tracking information, that's something that I was glad to take off. Yeah, totally. Um, I want to point people towards the site and if there's any other places we should point them towards, I have two last questions. One, um, they can go to jmcautomotiveequipment.com. If you know repair shops, <laughs> that's be perfect. <laughs> um, actually I do know a, a bunch. Um, so it's funny. Uh, or someone who knows a lot of repair shops. So we'll have to talk about that. But, um, where else should we point people towards Juan to check out about you, about the companies? So um, I have a couple of companies, right? Uh, the, the, the call center is called JM, JMC Enterprises. Okay. So the name of the website is jmcenterprises.co, right? Uh, we just launched it. We launched the website a couple of months ago. So we just started working on the Instagram, Facebook, all the social media venues. And of course, I also have uh, the VIP and concierge services in Colombia, both in Medellin and Cartagena. So uh, basically, like for people that are, that are looking to vacation, you know, that are looking to travel, and that, that need a company to take care of everything from A to Z, from transportation, housing, tours, English speaking, uh, translators, everything. That's the company to go to. And that would be Medellin VIP that net and Cartagena VIP that net. Those are also my companies as well. And of course, if you want to follow me uh, on my personal social media accounts is jchavez1898, uh, Instagram, Instagram, Twitter, everywhere. Got it. Thank you. Everyone check those out. We'll link them up. Juan, I always ask, since it's Inspired Insider, what's been a low moment, a challenging point that you had to push through? And then on the flip side, what's been a proud moment? What's been a challenging uh, low moment? So that's easy. <laughs> last year, last year around this same time uh, was a very, very low moment because uh, I, my, my, my second born was just, you know, he, he was born and I was more focused on family, you know, and the, the, the bookkeeper I had at the time wasn't doing the correct job at, at the bookkeeping. So um, I noticed after a couple of months that we were, we were losing a lot of money. You know, we were obviously more, we're, we're expen spending more money than was coming in. So I got very scared at one point, you know, because it wasn't, it's not just me anymore that, that, that I'm taking care of. Now I'm taking care of my wife my two kids, you know, I have responsibility behind me. So I was very, very afraid to fail. And it was a very low point up to like, you know, that I, I, that I would basically speak to my father every day and uh, like, you know, just tell him what was going on. Very nervous, very scared about what was happening. Did not know how to climb out of that, that hole and that debt that I was in. So I, I was basically telling my father like, Hey, I'm just going to go for bankruptcy, you know, because I don't think, 
I, I don't think I can handle this like mentally, you know, and of course talking to my father, you know, he's been in business since he was 20 years old. So he was like, how much money are you, are you, are you losing? He's like this much. He's like, I lost about 10 times more, <laughs> you know, throughout the time that I've been in business. So obviously that didn't make me feel any better. <laughs> <You're> but, like, <laughs> thanks. That doesn't make me feel better. <laughs> but at the same time, you're like, I'm you actually know, more scared now after that talk. <laughs> well, but the thing was like, you know, when you're going through these things with, through these hardships, you think you're the only person that's going through it. You know, you're like, wow, I suck as an entrepreneur. I suck as a business owner. I'm, I'm really the only person that's going through it. So you, you don't, you're not even opening up your eyes to what's going on. So obviously speaking to my father, him telling me that story was like, okay, like, you know, it's not making me feel any better, but people go through this stuff. People go through the, the lows in, in business, you know, and of course I gone through all the lows, but not as bad as the one that I did last year. And of course, just talking to different entrepreneurs, you know, um, was how I was able to climb out of that hole. And they were like, yeah, we're kind of going through the same thing. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, but you, you have to have in something that I kind of like started, you know, mental resilience where you have to be positive during those hard times. And that's when mental resilience is going to come about, you know, and I like now that I look back, I, I those months that I was sad and, and, and scared and nervous, I learned a lot because like even though I wanted to quit, I was like, you know what, I'm going I'm to push through, I'm going to push through, I'm going to push through, I'm going to push through and definitely develop different tactics on what I could do in order for the business to to survive because at the time at that time my mentality wasn't surviving uh not thriving you know like now it's something that i that i kind of like tell myself like you know you have to thrive not just survive right and and of course at that point all i all i could think about was just like survive 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 i was in survival mode in my mind and for example i even i even started doing cold calling to every client i had and just you know try to sell them that try to sell them the equipment that we had. And that worked. That was it. I was actually able to do a, a lot of, a lot of uh, big, sell a lot of big, big equipment uh, doing that. And of course, implementing different marketing strategies, like motivating my, my, my team a little bit more so they can start selling a lot more. That's how I was able to climb out of that hole. And, um, but yeah, that was been the hardest, the hardest time as an entrepreneur. Is sure. that how you turned it around? Juan, you basically just rolled up your sleeves and, just started calling. Yep. Yep. So, um, so I, 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 you know, I looked at the different opportunities that I had. Right. So I told myself, okay, what can I do in order to diversify what I'm doing right now? So I started writing more like, you know, because once you get successful, you kind of like, all right, like, you know, you got, you get, There's a you complacency. get a little comfortable. Yeah. You get a little comfortable, you know, which is what happened to me. And of course the distraction of my, my kids being born and everything like that, you know, it was, it was a little bit of a distraction. So, uh, kind of just went back and did what I had to do. Started cold calling, started writing blog articles again, started, you know, pushing my team, you know, started basically doing a lot of what I used to do in the beginning of the business in order to, to, to become successful again. And then little by little sales just started climbing back up, which kind of made me relax, but not relax uh, what I was doing with work, but just relax mentally and once I was able to relax and not be nervous and not be scared and not be, you know, pretty much at the, like, you know, think of myself like, you know, as a failure, I was able to look for different opportunities and just diversify more and more and more and more. Hmm. You know? Thanks for sharing that. Cause anyone's been in business, they, they've gone through that. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, there's, there's ups and downs. What about on the flip side, a proud moment? Um, a proud moment. Um, in the, probably in the past couple of months. Well, there's been a couple of them, right? Obviously, me joining the Inc., becoming a part of the Inc. 5000 two years in a row was a really proud moment. But I think um, an even prouder moment was when this whole pandemic hit. Of course, I, like I started feeling those same feelings of anxiety that I felt last year, right? So I was like, okay, I'm kind of used to this. So I was able to control those feelings a little bit more. And I was able to, uh, what I wanted to do is like, hey, listen, let, let, let me try to see if, how I can help the most business uh, business owners as much as possible, my, my own clients, right? So I started sending out um, personal emails or emails to my, my whole email marketing list. Like, hey, just positive, positive, honest, hey, if you guys need anything, I'm here, right? You know, something that would make them feel good 
both mentally, um, sending out business advice, you know, and just telling them like, Hey, here's my personal number. If you need to speak to anybody, please call me. Even if you need to just listen to somebody or just, you know, if you want to cry, cause I know people are going through a rough time, you know? So I sent several emails out and I got a lot of good responses, a lot of positive, like, Hey, thank you very much. You know, you're making me feel better. Like, you know, just reading your email definitely, um, you know, it, it, it's helping me climb out of this, this, this hole mentally, you know? And then, um, about a month after I sent those emails out, right. Um, I got a call from one of my, actually, no, I called one of, one of my clients, uh, because we had to do a, like, you know, we didn't, we didn't have his product that he put because it was on back order. And because of this whole pandemic, you know, like it wasn't, it, we, we couldn't ship it out. So I called them about personally, which sometimes I do, I still do sales calls and I, you know, so the guy was like, Hey, is this Juan? He's, um, and you know, he was like, yeah, this is Juan. He's like, Juan, thank you so much for calling me. Um, like, I really appreciate those emails you sent out in the beginning of this whole thing. Uh, cause it, it really helped me, you know, get, get to that positive mindset. Cause everybody at the time was, they didn't know what was, what was going on, you know? So just him telling me that I was like, wow, like I impacted people with those emails that I sent out, you know? So that was really cool that I was able to help out business owners, you know, kind of be, be more positive, even though this, we had this whole, excuse my language, shitstorm going on, you know, which of uncertainty, we didn't know what, what could happen. So that was a really like a, a really proud moment for me. Like yeah. a very emotional when that client, when that client called yeah. me up and he's from the bottom of his heart, he told me thank you like 50 times on the phone. So it was really, really cool to hear that. Yeah. That's rewarding, you know, making an impact to some of those people. Juan, I'm going to be the first one to thank you. Everyone should check out jmcenterprises.co.co and jmcautomotiveequipment.com. Juan, thanks for being with me. Jeremy, no, thank you very much for having me in the show. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, like a beach if you find the same right now. I feel like a hundred grand.